Hey everybody, Chelsea here, and today I'm going to show you how to edit your black and white landscape photos. You're going to take your picture from this to this. First, I want to tell you that all of the gear that I use to take the picture and the information about my Wacom tablet and everything is going to be in the description below because I get a lot of questions about that. So I'll put links down there for you. And I would also like to thank the people that have our Lightroom book for making these videos possible. So if you'd like to learn more about Lightroom, get more in-depth instruction, then you can get our book. It helps us make these videos for free, but it also helps you become a better editor. So that's good. Okay, so here's our picture. And uh, the things I'm gonna go over with you are the graduated filter, the radial filter, uh, a little bit of dodging and burning, and just how to make your black and white picture look good, to be put quite simply. So the first thing that I'd like to do is put it in black and white. And you can see that it looks muddy. And we've done a black and white show recently and that was the most common problem is that there weren't any whites in the picture. Everything was just kind of gray and that makes your picture look very flat. So I'll press Alt and then use the white slider to make sure there's white. One issue here is that the sky is very bright. We've got the sun right here. So that part of the picture is white, but then these highlighted parts here are still gray. So we'll have to go in and fix that. And what I'm gonna do is go into the colors down here and adjust appropriately. It's gonna be different for your picture because the colors will be different, but uh, these ruins here are orange. So if I bring up the orange, then it brings up the colors there. If I bring up the yellow, it also brings up the colors of these pavers and the foreground, the grass, which is what I want. Uh, you want some foreground, some middle ground, some background. It's really important to get your picture mostly perfect in camera. And then, you know, the editing just makes things all that much better. Next, I want my sun to be more visible. So I'm going to use a graduated filter and I'll pull it down here. exposure down. Bring my contrast up. And you can just adjust this middle bar if you want it taper off sooner, you can bring it up. If you want to meet the horizon more, you can bring it down. I'm gonna go somewhere in the middle because I like these rays from the sun, but I don't want to interrupt the lines from the mountains. So then I'll turn off this graduated filter. I like the way that that looks. And I'm going to just up my contrast a little bit. I love this tree. This is really what I was looking at when I was taking this picture. I loved the way that this pathway led to the mountains, but I also just thought that this tree was so beautiful, so I'd like to bring it out a bit more. I'm going to use my radial filter and just start by clicking where you want it, and you can make whatever shape you want. I'm gonna drag it down a bit, and then I want the tree just a bit brighter than the rest of, the rest of the picture. So let's just look at our before and after just to get an idea of what we're doing. So I'm bringing out this walkway here by upping the oranges and making them brighter, bringing out the tree a little bit and bringing out the sun and the rays from the sun. Next, I like to bring out the natural compositional elements of the photo by using a bit of dodging and burning. So you can use your adjustment brush and then find the natural lines in your picture. A big mistake that I see is that people will say, well, I want the tree to show, so boom. Now my tree is brighter. Maybe they won't be as sloppy, but you can tell and they're pretty sloppy and they don't take the time to do it the right way. What you want to do is accentuate the natural highlights. So if I wanted to bring up this tree, I would zoom in. 
I'm using my brackets, my right and left brackets to adjust my brush size, but you can also do it here. I'm gonna put the feathering all the way up and my flow down. And then I talk about the squinting method. I like to squint because it's easier for me to see where the highlights are. So I just squint and I go over where the highlights already are. You can press O and that will show you a mask to see what you're doing, but you can see I'm taking the spots that are already highlighted and I'm just accentuating what's already there. I find anytime I try to fight my picture, it looks unnatural. Sometimes people will get things all wrong in the camera and they're disappointed and I understand that. They try to fix it all in post and it ends up looking a mess. I've done it, I think everyone's done it. It's hard to let go of a picture that didn't turn out, but it's best to get a picture that works out well and then just accentuate it. And you could even be neater than I'm being now. Um, you, could, you can see that there are highlights and shadows on the trunk. If that's something you'd like to bring out, you can do that. It never hurts to try if it ends up looking bad. You just use this erase tool here and you can get rid of it. And sometimes I even use the erase tool to help me blend some of the editing that I'm doing. So if there are hard lines, you can go back and you can use the erase tool to make it look more natural. And now I'll get rid of my mask and zoom out. And you can see this is double click on that and it will go to zero you can bring it up all the way it looks very unnatural I'd probably bring it up to point 40 ish or less whatever looks good to you now I'm going to press new and use a new brush because I've got the tree the way that I want it and even if I want to brighten the exposure in other parts of the picture I don't necessarily want as bright as the tree um, I love how the tops of the ruins here are lighter than the rest, and I'd like to accentuate that. So that's the next thing that I'm gonna do. Oh, I'm looking here and that looks a little too bright. I might bring that down later. I'll put on my mask so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just finding highlights and I'm bringing them out. And I'm going to bring up my flow a little bit and make my brush a little bit smaller. If you make a mistake like that, that's when you can just use your erase tool. I like the way the light hit inside of these windows. So I'm bringing out that too. And similarly, I like how the light hit the ground here. So I'm just going to accentuate those a bit.
So I've zoomed out and I can see all of the places that my mask are, all the places that I'm going to increase the exposure of, and I'm taking off my mask. And then I like to just put my exposure way up just to see how it took, see how it could look. And then I'm going to bring it down to a reasonable amount, 0.50, looks okay. And then I'll do another mask. And you can see how the light hits the mountains. There are some highlights on the side and some shadows. And I'm going to just bring out the highlights a little bit. And here it's a bit hazy, so it's harder to do because if you have hard lines on your brush, it'll be really obvious. So I'm gonna be very light with these edits. And by bringing out those highlights, I just accentuated the edges of the mountains, giving the photo a little bit more depth. One last thing that I'm going to do is add a bit of sharpness to the photo. A lot of people sharpen their photos. There's a right way to do it, so let me show you. I'll find the part of the photo that's supposed to be the most sharp, the focal point. And I think that's somewhere around this tree, and I'll use these rocks as a point of reference. So we'll up our sharpening a little bit, press Alt, and then slide our mask. Ooh, we don't want the entire picture to be sharp. So we'll slide up the masking until just the parts that we want to be sharpened are highlighted. And then you can up the sharpening. Now, a problem that I see often is that people put the sharpening all the way up, and you, can, you might be able to see if you have this full screen, there are artifacts. It looks like there's just fuzz around everything. You want to only sharpen enough that it still looks natural. So this too much starts to look grainy. So I'd say at about 23, I've reached the most sharpening that I can do. And then you can up your overall clarity a tiny bit too. Now I'm going to press Y. I always like to check the before and after and see if there's anything else I'd like to bring out. Right now these God rays look so much better in uh, black and white to me. We have brought out the tree and that really looks more like the subject of the photo. We have brought out this leading line that kind of brings your eye back to this little V in the mountains here. So we have this nice channel that's leading your eyes through the photo. And then this payoff kind of at the end is the sun, right? Your eye leads down, you see the sun. It can come back and then there's the tree so there's a nice composition going there and all of our edits are helping that composition and helping the way that the photo looks. Uh, one last thing here, I think that the sun isn't bright enough. So let's try the highlight here and see how that works. So that brightens it up more and let's see if we'll try bringing up the whites a little bit. And that looks good. So you can share your photos down below if you want. Uh, if there's another editing video you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. And please check out our books, Lightroom 6 CC. We also have a Lightroom 5 book. And thank you. Bye.